Blessings, blessings. I pray everyone is having a beautiful day in the name of Jesus. I am going to continue to read Genesis 8 to you all. If you are just watching this video for the first time, I have been doing a Bible study on the chapter of Genesis. God called me to reread Genesis for myself as I thought, but then put down in my spirit, I needed to read it along with everyone. So I have created a playlist for Genesis, the book of Genesis, and any other chapter that God wants us to read together because we know that everyone does not own a Bible. Everyone does not read a Bible. So if you are on YouTube or whatever and you just come across this video, you know that this video is meant for you to listen to in the name of Jesus. Now we left off in Genesis 7. And we was learning about Noah and the ark and everything that God had told him to do with the ark. And we know that God flooded the earth 40 days and 40 nights. And he had Noah to build an ark with his family only in it, just his family. God saved Noah's family from the flood, from the evilness of the world. And he wanted to start over with Noah and his family and the animals that he had Noah to save in the name of Jesus. So we are going to continue reading in Genesis 8. We're going to find out what else happened in the name of Jesus. And God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters a swag. The fountains also of the deep and the windows of heaven were stopped and the rain from heaven was restrained. And the waters returned from off the earth continually. And after the end of the hundred and fifty days, the water was abated. And the ark rested in the seventh month. On the seventeenth day of the month, upon the mountains of Arahat. And the waters decreased continually until the tenth month. In the tenth month, on the first day of the month, were the tops of the mountains seen. And it came to pass at the end of the 40 days that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made, and he sent forth a raven which went from, I'm sorry, which went forth to and fro until the waters were dried up from off the earth. Also, he sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters were abated from off the face of the ground. But the dove found no rest for the sole of her feet, her foot. And she returned unto him into the ark, for the waters were on the face of the whole earth. Then he put forth his hand and took her and poured her in unto him into the ark. And he stayed yet another seven days, and again he sent forth the dove out of the ark. And the dove came into him in the evening, and lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf plucking. Also Noah knew that the waters were abated from off the earth. And he stayed yet another seven days, sent forth the dove, which returned not again unto him any more. And it came to pass in the six hundred and first year, in the first month, the first day of the month, the waters was dried up from off the earth, and nor removed the covering of the ark, and looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. And in the second month, on the seventh and twentieth day of the month, was the earth dry, and God spake unto Noah, saying, Go forth of the ark, thy and thy wife, and thy sons, and thy sons' wives with thee. Bring forth with thee every living thing that is with thee of all flesh, both of fowl and of cattle, and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, that they may breathe abundantly in the earth, and be fruitful and multiply upon the earth. And Noah went forth, and his sons, and his wife, and his sons' wives with him. Every beast, every creeping thing, and every fowl, and every, I'm sorry, and, and whatsoever creepeth on the earth after their kinds went forth out of the ark. And Noah built an altar unto the Lord, and took of every clean beast, of every clean fowl, and offered, offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a sweet savior, savor, and the Lord said in his heart, I would not again curse the ground any more for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth, his youth. Neither will I again smite any more ever 
every living thing, I'm sorry, everything living as I have done while the earth remains in seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease in the name of Jesus. So as we read Genesis 8, we know that God, we know that um, this is after the flood that Noah is so they're talking about everything that happened after the flood, what went on. I also know that God wants us to always be fruitful and multiply no matter what it is. We don't want to ever think that because we may not have certain things right now or we may be living in a certain situation or we may have certain things going on in our life, that God does not want us to be abundantly blessed. Because as you can see in these scriptures, God says, be fruitful and multiply does not just mean with children. It means with everything that we have in our lives. God wants us to live abundantly. We should not be living in lack at all. At all. Does not matter. Never accept it. Never accept it. Know that you are made for more. God has created you for more. God has blessed you to have more. You are abundantly blessed. In the name of Jesus. So, that's what I'm going to say about chapter 8. That's all I want to say about chapter 8. And I'm going to continue to be to chapter 9. I will see you all in the next video. Blessings to you all. I pray that this word has blessed you all. Remember to go back Read it for yourself, or you can read along as I read. In the name of Jesus, have a good day. Blessings.